on the ongoing protest against one of the units under the Nigerian police force, the Special anti robbery Squad, popularly known as SARS. Yesterday felt like a seeming victory when the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamo, at a press briefing announced that the unit has been dissolved across all formations in the 36 state police commands and the federal capital territory. He noted that all officers and men currently serving in the unit are to be redeployed um, with immediate effect. He said um, new policing arrangements um, to address the offenses of armed robbery and other violent crimes that fall within the mandate of the dissolved anti-robbery squad shall be presented in due course. However, protesters are now insisting on police reform. The prosecution of culpable officers of the disbanded outfit, psychological evaluation, and retraining of um, all the disbanded SARS officers before they can be deployed, among other demands, of course. At the moment, protesters are back on the streets of Lagos, and of course, that's the reason for the gridlock and traffic. Now, joining us virtually to discuss this issue is Chidi Okereke, a communication strategist who has been actively involved in the protest, and William Moore, a Nigerian author who had once been harassed and detained by members of the dissolved SARS. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, um, let's start with Chidi. Um, you've been involved in this protest since from day one. And um, how would you react to the um, press briefing from the IGP? And why do you think the protesters are not backing down? Um, first, hi, everyone. First of all, Hi. shout out to everybody who's been involved in the protest. Um, yeah. um, we're all heroes, we're all leaders, and it's impressive what we've done. It's it's really groundbreaking. It's amazing. Um, regarding the press statement of the IGP, it's I mean it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable that um, that press that press conference came from the IGP. Um, it could be fine, but then we wanted the president to address us. I mean, as as they keep pushing back, as they keep delaying. Our demands keep increasing. And we wanted the president to address us. He's, he's, he's been acting like he, he doesn't know what's happening, you know, on looking at everything. So the president should address us. Um, the statement is not wholesome. It's not complete. He gave us five things that the NSAS team makes. Okay. And one of them is that the, 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 the SARS operatives are going to be redeployed. You're telling that you want to redeploy people who have been brutalizing other people. You want to redeploy murderers. You want to redeploy rapists. You want to redeploy people who have no regard for human life. You take out all the clips, all the clips, um, um, all the clips about SARS brutality and everything, and you see that these guys they, they shoot into crowds. You find out that even after the statement, the police is still brutalizing citizens who are still protesting. So what what really has ended? What we're fighting for is an end to brutality, and you come out and make a statement and five. They're still making the statement, and people are still getting brutalized. So what, what's, what's the point? Hello, so Jimmy. all our demands, like you have mentioned, Hello, all our Jimmy. demands and many more, it's not even limited to those five demands. There's still a lot of them. Hello, so there's a lot of demands that Jimmy. we're making. Jimmy. I'm going to meet all of them before the protests are going to end. If not, a luta continua. Chidi, I understand where you're coming from, especially being a victim of um, SARS brutality, police brutality, because it's not just about SARS right now. But suddenly, we suddenly just realized that there are some of those things that are supposed to be put in place. Now, when we all went outside on Tuesday, on Thursday, on Wednesday, on Friday, and we're shouting for NSAS movement, why were we not protesting for these other things to be put in place? Because we know, at the end of the day, we didn't win nothing, which is why we're back on the street, right? Now, why were we not fighting for victory? Because that is my problem with all of this, because even right on this table, what I've been asking for is reformation. I've said that, look, I'm not saying NSARS because they have their benefits, right? All I've been asking for is reformation. I've been saying that, okay, put them on hold, even if it's for a year. Show us the training. The U.S. Navy, the U.S. Na um, Navy SEAL, we see the amount of training they go through. Now, why were we not asking for, okay, can we be carried along in the training of these people? How do you approach citizens? How do you react in certain situations? How do you do this? These were the things that some of us were asking for. And then all of a sudden, it's 
is like we just got a, a, a wake up call and saying that, oh no, it's no longer in SARS. It's about how you're going to be putting these people. Because already we know, when we're asking for people, for this SARS to be completely disbanded and all these people to be fired. No, that's not what we were doing. We were clamoring, and SARS, and SARS. So why are we just waking up right now? And this question goes to okay, you as well. So, so, why are you just so, waking up? So it is, first of all, first of all, when you say we're just waking up, you're wrong. This protest started in 2017. Yes. This mm. conversation, this campaign started in 2017. Mm. After I basically held a dead woman in my arms who was shot by SARS. Mm. Yeah. It started in 2017, and we've been pushing, we've been clamoring for it. Now, if you understand anything about organizing, mm. about leading protests, about being a part of protests, you understand that there has to be a melting pot. There has to be a meeting point. There has to be an initial demand, an initial demand that you write, that you use to rally people around. That initial demand was NSAS. Now, because the, the design of this protest was no leadership, no organization, everybody is a leader. Everybody do your thing. Mm. Nobody could come together and put demands together. You could not do that. So are yeah. we blaming the it's government for that? that are we, we blaming that the one, government that we couldn't come together? Two five, sorry, we won't put together um, two five, five, uh, five key points. It's as a result of feedback from various people who are part of the campaigns. We, I think like let William it's come in at this point. Police unit. But how do you get people to come to that point where we're agreeing on something? What, so one wait, particular we, thing, my question one particular to you thing now is Chidi. Us all together. Chidi. And at this point, that particular thing was answered. Chidi, who That's are really we bad. blaming for the youth not coming together to ask for a specific demand? Are we blaming the government or are we blaming ourselves? I think we've asked for a specific Are you saying, demand. Are you saying, are we blaming? Nobody and, is blaming let, let William Nobody come is in at this point. William, um, I'm what's your take? The design take? of this campaign, the design of this protest was no leaders. Everybody do your thing. Everybody come together and do your thing. While we're doing it, we're creating demand. We're but we're back to ground zero. Together. But the, the meeting, the bottom part of the entire thing is NSAS, which is why NSAS is the, is the meat of the whole thing. Now, SARS has seemingly been ended. But has it been ended if the people who have been doing all these murders have been redeployed? What are the trials? Have they tried anybody? Have they arrested anybody? GD, so they've not done all that. So saying SARS has been ended on paper and by the IGP for the first time in as many years, it means, not it the no first sense. time, no, this is the third time. time. So this is going to be okay. ended when you start prosecuting all the people who have been um, accused of these violent crimes yeah. in the past. That is going to be ended okay, Chidi, when we don't see them in the system anymore. Or they are going to be put my back in brother, the system. I'm, with, with, I'm, with you, I'm with you on that, but let's quickly get to um, William for a second, please. Um, th thank you for your response. I mean, I, I've been at the protest. After the work that I just did today, I, I, maybe before I was interested, now I'm invested. Mm. <laughs> so I know that you know this is something that really irks people. And even in my in discomfort of trekking, I still felt like this is good because the fact that it's reaching me all the way down somewhere in New Market, it means that we're doing something. Now I'm, I'm asking for the question from protesters. There's a lot of young people, a lot of young people, and we, not everyone has an influence or a TV station that they can use their voices and all that. But a lot of people are asking. The ones that are ready to protest is like, how far are we going with that? What should we be looking for as landmarks to be able to tell that we're doing something right? NSAS being on TV was definitely a, a good um, feedback for us because, you know, after you stand in the sun and then they finally we're now on TV, it doesn't mean that we know we know the history and we don't trust that that means that everything is gone. But I just wanted to find out if people are watching right now and are protesting, either they're in traffic, standing with us, because uh, I've seen people even today protesting and um, uh, educating people in traffic why they're in traffic and there's people in you know the toll gates and all that what measures would you say that we will start to see to, to tell the protesters including myself that ah yes we are making some type of progress um I think I think we are already um, successful with this protest regardless of the outcome and I would I would tell you why I say that mm. just the idea that we can structure a cohesive Nigerian youth voice. The fact that the Nigerian youth now feel like we can actually form a type of political block and create our own power in mm. itself is already progress. Mm. The fact that the country is, you know, nearing a shutdown is mm. progress. The fact that you can see this in international media, the fact that even if, the fact that they, we even force their hand into giving us a statement, even if the yeah. statement is, is false, just the fact that Oh, like, you know, we demanded some kind of response. That in itself is progress. Mm. The fact that, you know, this would, I believe, spur a lot of civic education. These yeah. kinds of conversations are going to now start happening more. You know, the fact that it's, it's making people feel more politically conscious, more, more aware that this is your country. And 
you know, you, you very much demand a piece of the land as well. Mm. And nobody's going to come and bully you out of it. I think these are really like, like for me now, all I'm thinking about is election mm. 2023 mm. and yeah, how really. this kind of mentality that is already in the air mm. is going to affect how, how people behave then. So I would, I would say um, we, don't, we don't need a trophy. We don't need, like, it is just enough to know that as a generation, we've gone beyond tribe. We've left okay. our father's yeah. wars. Okay. And we've we've come together to 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 make a movement. For me, that is a, a type of success we'll, in, in we'll its own right. To um, Chidi, um, I've seen some youths as well, even using social media, to say they want um, a, a presidential speech from the president himself. Now, what? Why do you think they're clamoring for that? And what's the difference between that speech and the that one we've gotten from the IGP? From the IGP? It's, so the presidential speech is because in the past, the IGP has banned SARS four times. Again, I say it's four times mm -hmm. in the past four years. Mm -hmm. yeah, SARS has been banned or bad or disbanded, as the case may be. And it all came from the IGP. Mm -hmm. So now beyond even the president you know, speaking and giving an executive order, it has to be backed by the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It has to be an act backing the dissolution of SARS. You understand? So it is not when I say the president is speaking. You know, I'm saying all these things. I'm just one person saying my own demands. Mm. There's a central sort of like a central demand pot and everything. But I'm just saying what's me, I feel satisfied about. But then if the general populace are fine with certain things, that's fantastic. Like I said, these protests have no leaders. Mm. Nobody's speaking for any other. No, I'm speaking for myself and a few other people. You understand? So if the president speaks, it might still not be enough until we see an executive order. There might still not be enough until the Senate or the National Assembly as a whole comes together and signs this thing into law. It's not that another president will come in tomorrow and change everything that's happened. Hmm. William, so the William, point is that William, um, really quickly, the president can... speaking is just one of the William. things. Thank you, Chidi. I, I, can see, I can see that William is, is you know, having an unreadable face. But I want to ask, when, he, when Chidi keeps mentioning that we don't have any leaders, absolutely, yes. It's not like Black Lives Matter where there was literally a founder. But they ha they are people who you would... Points to to say that and they've the been super mm -mm, not um, forefront, but they've been super influential with that. There's a bunch of names that come up, and I don't want to. I can't name everyone, so I don't want to start something I can't finish. But when he says that, do you agree that um, that it is absolutely faceless? And is that a, a a con or a pro to the movement? Um, I think the um um. I mean, I would say we have. I would just refer to them as heroes in the sense that, you know, these are people that have been um, exemplary in mm. the movement. But I wouldn't necessarily refer to them as leaders because they do not make um, decisions, so to speak, regarding whether the movement is going to continue or stop. All that is crowdsourced. I think the crowdsourced is the only thing that can work in Nigeria. If we had, a, if we had some leaders, all they need to do is send DSS to pick them up. And that's it. It's a wrap. Yeah. You know, we, we, we saw this with the, and I mean, I can't speak on it completely because I wasn't in all the rooms, but a lot of people uh, make the argument that uh, it was the, the two-faced um, um, yeah. proposed, yeah. Um, um, yeah. you know, because that had a leader, all they had to do was pin one person. You yeah. see, so worry, all they had to do was pin one person, mm. you know, so I, I, I really do think this, this structure where there is no leader, it's faceless. Oh, yeah. mm. If you are going to arrest one person, you might as well arrest a thousand people. Mm. I think it works a lot better. I think this, right. this, this, this is the only thing that can work in, in Nigeria. And here, there is, there is a real fear about posturing as a leader here. Mm. You know, as early as Ken Sarawa, they've been killing people that lead yeah. movements in this country. So I, I, I really think this formula, I, I, can, I could not ask for a better formula okay. in Nigeria. I don't think we need the leadership model. I think that the crowdsource model is, is, is more than enough. Thank you so much, William and Chidi. We'll definitely be on the news on Plus TV Africa to follow up the story. All Thank right. you.